Good evening, everyone. Um, thanks to the organizers for having us all here. It's a pleasure to be a part of such, a, such an event where we get to meet and discuss such distinguished speakers. Uh, we've heard a lot about uh, you know, steel and green buildings and everything. I was just uh, sharing with one of the organizers in the lunch break that uh, speaking in the post-lunch session, there are three major disadvantages. Number one, most of the things that you want to talk about have already been spoken about. Number two, post-lunch, uh, fortunately that's not the scenario here, but uh, the responsibility is on the speaker, additional responsibility of keeping the people uh, awake. Uh, and if they're awake, uh, they should stay back and not uh, leave. And uh, third, of course, is uh, again uh, the fact that uh, by the time your turn comes, most of the speakers prior to you have already taken up minutes by minutes, so you, we are hardly left with any, any time to uh, you know, focus on things. But anyways, I'll, I'll, without uh, uh, going into too much of uh, uh, you know, uh, general discussions, I'll cut short my presentation. Earlier I was just planning to uh, showcase two of our projects, important projects that we've been engaged, uh, which are really close to my heart. Uh, one is we are engaged in a development of a module, a typical module, of uh, solar toll plazas across the country. And then uh, there's another project that we did about three years back. It was a very, very small project. It was a two-room guest house at the rooftop of uh, Queen Elizabeth Hall in London. And uh, both these projects involve extensive use of steel, uh, structurally, uh, in facade, in finishes, and everywhere. The first project that I want to talk about is uh, we christened that as uh, Solar Accord, and rightly so, because say if you talk, if you if you look at the definition of the word accord, it's uh, you know be in harmony with something or to give somebody some sort of an authority. Now we are trying to develop a typical module for the toll plazas, and toll plazas are 99% of the cases. Uh, in isolated locations on deserted highways where there's hardly any resource around for their construction, for their maintenance, for their uh, you know, upkeep and everything. So the first thing that came to our mind when we started designing this uh, solar toll plazas was you know, when we Im started imagining the location where it uh, might come up was, a, was a, uh, you know, a highway with nothing around. So we, I started picturing, uh, let's say, an oasis in a desert and how an oasis would look, how would it function, how would it uh, behave, what kind of resources we would require in order to, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, bring it to reality. And when you talk about oasis, again, the first thing that came to mind was a bunch of trees. So why not develop a toll plaza in the form of an oasis, which is more, uh, you know, similar to, an o uh, to a bunch of trees? Here what uh, Professor Shah uh, spoke about in the morning, you know, being inspired by nature and how nature can really, you know, bring about the reality uh, into, a, into any project. It's, this, it's the same kind of thing that, uh, you know, happened to this project. When we started developing these toll plazas and, uh, you know, generally uh, uh, the kind of plazas that we notice are those monstrous canopies, huge, uh, sometimes cantilevered, sometimes uh, you know suspended with the, the cables and everything. Uh, uh, one 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 of my uh, partners, who was uh, an Italian architect, when he visited India three years back, uh, three and a half years back, the first two things that he noticed here was, I was driving him back uh, from the airport to the hotel, and uh, first thing that he noticed was, on the roads, everybody is honking at everybody, but nobody's listening to anybody, and. Second thing was the size of the flyovers is enormous. It's, it's just like monstrous. I mean, the kind of beams, the kind of columns, the kind of structural members we have exposed. It's, I mean, why can't we have the same kind of sleekness, the, kind, the same kind of, uh, you know, uh, slenderness in our structural members when we go and see these kinds of flyovers coming up in the Middle East or in European countries or Americas? The same thing can, can be done here, but 
that's not what he found here. So what we decided was that when we are going to come up with this toll plaza, our structural members, number one, will have to have that slenderness, that has sleekness, that uh, you know, uh, minimalism, and then it has to be inspired by nature. We started working on the structure of a tree of a plant and starting with the most basic petal, the most basic uh, you know, uh, tree form is what took the form of a, of, a, of a typical module of a canopy. Now, there's this process that's called heliotropism. It's a kind of tropism wherein, I mean, we all know about the sunflower. It always faces the sun. So our intention was to create a sort of a module, a typical module, which can be rotated according to different times of the season, summers, winters, autumn, spring. And because, as we all know, the sun, the uh, azimuth and the uh, altitude of the sun changes in different seasons. So accordingly, the module should be in, uh, fabricated in such a way that the panels, the solar panels, are able to rotate according to the uh, particular season. Normally, the solar panels that are installed are installed in bulk and in huge panel sizes, which makes it practically difficult for them to rotate. I mean, there's an average value that is calculated over a period of season, uh, over a period of days, and then accordingly, that, those values are used to uh, you know, uh, arrive at the right size of the panel. But what we decided was, how about if we break down these big size panels into smaller pieces, and then make those pieces feasible enough so that they are able to be rotated. And accordingly, we started giving a more organic character to these canopies by installing these solar uh, photovoltaic cells on the, uh, on the petals. This is how we started developing the structure. This is exactly what I was just talking about. Heliotropism. This image very clearly uh, conveys the idea how the leaves or the petals of any flower always face and orient themselves towards the direction of the sun. And this is how our, we intended our uh, solar plaza to behave uh, during different parts of the season, uh, year. That was a typical module that we developed for uh, for the, uh, for the plaza booth. And then what we, the, the problem initially we started facing was that if we have these kind of, uh, you know, organic forms, how do we ensure that maximum solar energy is harnessed? What should be the size of these, uh, you know, uh, canopies? What should be the orientation? What should be the angle? And then we realized that it's very difficult to harness Maximum solar energy is if everything is placed at the same level, at the same height, with the same orientation. Each panel needs to be at different heights if we have to do justice to uh, the uh, inspiration that we have drawn from the nature. And the result was this. Uh, something more organic, something more, I mean, it is, we can say, a sort of uh, disorganized uh, organization. I mean, there is harmony in all the, uh, in, uh, among all the booths. At the same time, there is an organic character to it. And this is finally what we proposed. Uh, and uh, the, eventually, the design for the plaza came up. Instead of having a continuous, general, and a very monotonous sort of uh, uh, you know, uh, a canopy or a, or a structure, which is usually either suspended or cantilevered, we, uh, try to come up with a solution wherein there are different heights for these canopies and make it look like an oasis of trees, of solar trees. That was, that is the site plan uh, that you can see. There's this, uh, this plaza office building here. There's a, there's a utility building here. And then there's this uh, offloading uh, uh, area for the trucks. Uh, This is the result that you see eventually that uh, we could, uh, you know, uh, uh, we could uh, come up with. We did a lot of study about the facades, about 
how uh, this kind of a structure can be made because usually when the construction of uh, toll plazas happen and as I said it's usually happening at places where there's no resource around so it's always better to have a prefabricated solution for a for a for a uh, you know a, 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 a construction like this because things can be prefabricated in one location transported to the site where and wherever wherever they are located and uh, you know they can steal like uh, one of uh, the speakers rightly said it's one of the most green uh, green materials because it can be recycled any number of times it can be reused it can be prefabricated uh, in the way the manner you want so we decided to have this building made in prefabricated steel construction we did an extensive study to uh, ensure we are not only embarking on the active energy harvesting solutions but also passive design solutions this was a study done in ecotech to understand what are the energy requirements generally one 16 lane toll plaza requires around 750 to 800 uh, megawatts of electricity to be run that's the average value it could vary uh, from places to places and the number of canopies that you would require to generate that amount of uh, 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 electrical uh, load, uh, electrical uh, supply was coming out to be around uh, 48 canopies uh, on one side of the road. So we need to have three to four canopies per tree, per uh, uh, module. So that was the kind of calculation that we had uh, worked out. So it's about... Maybe, uh, see, I don't have the calculations with me right now, but uh, what I'm, I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to challenge that because I don't remember the figure correctly, but somewhere around, uh, it, it was around 700 or something like that. Kilo, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. I used the word megawatt, it, it's kilowatt, kilowatt, kilowatt. I, I very vaguely remember it was 700 or 750, it's kilowatt, I, I, I yeah. So, uh, so that uh, with that calculation, we came up uh, with this uh, conclusion that we need around three to four canopies per tree per, per, per tree module. Then uh, again, we did some uh, study for making the uh, use of the passive design techniques, using techniques of earth air tunnels, natural uh, evaporative cooling, daylighting. Using now the building envelope that we proposed to use was using sandwich panels with the uh, steel plates on either side and insulation in between. Now, this is, all this is a part of uh, uh, prefabricated construction, which eases out our job as an architect or as an engineer, that they can be manufactured and transported to the site, assembled with ease, as and when required. Any part of the season, there's no uh, hassle of uh, disposing the construction waste during and after the process of construction. I might also have a, I'm sorry, I, I wanted to show you an animation which we made for this, uh, this project, but it's not there unfortunately right now. Anyways, uh, so that was one important project that I wanted to share uh, because this project has not just given us, the use of steel in this project has not just given us the liberty to uh, flex our creativity muscles, which usually we don't get the opportunity with the client, kind of clients we have in uh, you know, our daily uh, professional life. But then uh, this project is, is really very important for us because we really look forward that once materialized, this would open up a lot of opportunities, a lot of options, a lot of doors for people like us, people, uh, architects and engineers who can not only think in terms of innovation but also experimentation because as what one of the speakers rightly said that anything which is new when needs to be endorsed has to be proven first in any society it's not just India anywhere in the world people find it acceptance only when it is proven in terms of strength in terms of maintenance in terms of cost and everything so I really look forward for that uh, this is another project which is almost nearing completion uh, it's a sports academy, a sports complex that we are doing in, uh, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, and almost, you can say, uh, a miniature version of an indoor stadium. 
it has been inspired again from the nature by uh, there's this uh, very very beautiful and a small tiny little flower that's aldafra which is very typical of typical fauna of uh, uh, the uh, of that uh, geographical area of uae and the entire uh, project was conceived in a way that you know this kind of uh, plantation made it I, i'll just show you how it uh, influenced our concept this is the site plan this is the uh, view aerial view of the project why i chose to show this project to you is because uh this project is uh, sort of uh, proof or an evidence that how steel without uh, you know with, uh, without uh, uh, too much of a uh, let's say uh, experimentation i mean in its present uh, uh, capacity can be used to give a different treatment to the facade itself the building is being a sports complex needed uh columnless spans huge uh, uh, bigger spans for the uh, indoor uh, swimming pool for the indoor basketball area uh, hall for the uh, tennis courts and everything so steel was inevitable to be uh, not to be used and this is typical facade the front uh, elevation of the building wherein we try to use screen as the louvers for the building and the main entrance lobby this is the view of the entrance lobby which is a combination of glass and steel steel screen louvers a typical section which shows how we try to achieve this in terms of facade engineering in terms of uh, cutting and using it as sun breakers uh just quickly i'll i'll just flip through these slides because before the organizers start pulling me off the stage uh this is the project that i was talking about uh, talking about it's a very small but a very very nice project that i did about 3 years back it's a two room guest house on the on the rooftop of a very small building that's called elizabeth hall in london uh and it's right abutting the uh west uh, coast uh, uh, banks of uh, the river thames the entire structure is in steel and the membrane of this uh, 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 steel structure was covered with the uh, uh, pvc sheets the tensile fabric that you see there are two parts to uh, there are two parts to this uh, 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 this room for london like what you see right now in the front is the summer court wherein the tensile structures that you see above have been positioned in such a way that they in london being a very cold place of course uh most of the time here we try and cut the sun but uh, there in london we need to have the, the sun uh, so the summer court and the court behind was the winter court so the canopies and the uh, the tensile structures were designed in such a way that you know we had maximum sun during the summers and uh, uh, sorry the winters and as much summer as possible during the uh, summers that's it i think uh, my main intention was to not really uh, you know the show, uh, the uh, uh, the showcasing of the projects but how steel can be used as a very very fluid material as a very uh, flamboyant material and one of the concerns i mean i would like to share uh, before leaving is that uh, probably not everybody is lucky enough to be like uh, professor shah that we can get opportunities to design uh, airports and uh, uh big terminals and things like that but what uh, also madhav i think uh, said very correctly that if steel can be incorporated at some medium level scale medium scale projects small scale projects i'm not talking about shopping malls i'm not talking about hospitals or uh, you know uh, even the hotels let's say a small kiosk on the road side or maybe just a traffic police uh, traffic police uh, booth if those kind of structures or barricading anything where steel can show its potential or we can harness its potential to some extent i think we would be very very happy to do that because common people will find acceptance of steel only when they see it in a daily life not everybody is visiting airports not everybody is visiting uh, uh, you know passenger terminals cargo terminals not everybody is lucky enough to go and see howrah bridge but then people who see a kiosk which is very shabbily done in maybe wood or 
you know, something like that, if that can be some, done in something like steel, very nicely, beautifully and maintained, I think that will give us a very good opportunity to, uh, to prove our uh, creativity and uh, work as architects. Thank you very much.